Welcome to Electron Line, and now let's answer the question, is our solar system unique? Well, we would like to think so. We have the Earth, which I think by all standards is extremely unique. And the fact that we have four terrestrial planets and a bunch of moon made, moons made of rock and ice, and then having those four large gas planets. So you would think that, yes, we live in a very unique place. Matter of fact, there was a time when I was young that we didn't know if there were any other solar systems. Was our solar system so unique that this was the only one in the galaxy or the only one in the universe? Or were solar systems expected to be uh, kind of common? And maybe almost every star has planets revolving around it. Of course, we didn't know. I guess in retrospect, if we thought about it, it just makes a lot of sense because when we start thinking about how solar systems form, how a cluster of a cloud of dust and gas collapses into a nebula that, that then fastly rotates around and that material would be driven out by the radiation of the immersion protostar and by the centripetal forces, you would think that yes, solar systems ought to form. But we didn't know. We needed evidence to be able to say yes, there's other solar systems. And over the last years, over the last 20, 30 years or so, we've been able to get, gain the capability of detecting planets in other solar systems. As a matter of fact, at this point, we've probably confirmed close to about 2,000 planets around other stars, and some of them at hundreds of light years away from here. How did we do that? Do we have telescopes big enough and powerful enough for us to be able to see them? The answer is no. We cannot yet see them. However, there are telescopes on the drawing board that hopefully in about 15 years or so will actually enable us, once they're built and once they're working, enable us to see planets for real. Wow, that would be quite some interesting adventure, but we're still about 15 years away from that. So how do we detect planets? Well, we have ways of seeing that there's a planet there, not really because we can see the planet, but because of the effect that it has on the star nearby. Gravitationally, they're interlocked, so if a large planet revolves around the sun at close distances, we are able to see slight movements in that star, and by studying those movements, we can deduce that there must be a planet. In other cases, planets will actually revolve in front of the star, and so temporarily dim the light coming from the star because part of it is blocked, and we can see those slight variations in intensity, and if we then watch them periodically, we can then surmise that there must be a planet there. So using those techniques, we've been able to find about 2,000 planets or so and confirm that they're really there. And there's several more thousand candidates that we're still trying to determine if they're planets or not that require further investigation. So if we then chart those planets, if we chart, chart the distance away from the star, if, if this is the distance away from the star, you can see that a lot of planets end up very close to the star. Matter of fact, about one third of all planets that we've discovered so far have orbits that lie within the orbit of Mercury. That's quite amazing. In addition to that, at least three quarters, if not 80% of all the planets found lie in an orbit closer than Mars. So you can see that in our case, since four of the eight planets lie in orbit past Mars, that would be kind of unusual. Here you see that that's not the case. However, we have to realize that for us to be able to detect planets far away from the star, that is much more difficult because the effect on the star would be much smaller and it's likely to be seen or discovered by us. So it only makes sense due to the limitations of our ability to detect these planets that we would detect the easy ones, the ones that have a larger impact on their stars and therefore we're able to see them or at least detect them indirectly easier. And so this may not be a true representation of the type of planets and where they're located in their solar systems across, excuse me, across the board. In addition to that, the vast majority of the planets that we found have masses greater than the mass of Jupiter. Wow! Jupiter is by far the largest planet in our solar system and if most of the planets we discover out there are Jupiter-like planets with even more mass than Jupiter, then we'd say, well, our solar system must be extremely rare because we have a lot of smaller planets. All the planets are smaller than Jupiter. In the case that we find planets outside our solar system, they're all larger, or not all, but the vast majority of them are larger than Jupiter. But again, the larger the planet, the greater the influence on the star, the easier it is for us to detect them. And again, it may be a skewing of the actual truth that there's actually a lot of smaller planets out there. We just haven't been able to find them because they're much more difficult to detect. They're smaller. They don't, make a, they don't block out as much light. They don't influence the planet as much. There's not a, not a lot of wobble there in the planet, uh, I should say, on the star with the effect of the planet. So we don't know yet. 
But what we can say is that solar systems by themselves are no longer unique. We're not unique because of our solar system. There's probably billions of them out there just in our galaxy alone. So stars with planets, a very common occurrence. We just need to learn more about what those planets are. And by now, the picture that we're drawing, that they're mostly large planets, because those are the ones we can detect. They're usually very close to the star. That's because that's where they have a greater influence. And in some cases, we have detected that there's multiple planets around a single star. And that's because uh, we can see multiple motions in those stars indicating there's more than one planet around them. Again, we have not yet detected any planets directly, but we will in due time, given the opportunity to build bigger telescopes uh, to enable us to do that. So, we're not unique. But is the Earth unique? Well, we still have to answer that question because so far we haven't seen any indication that there's planets out there that are like the Earth. We have found some planets that may kind of be like the Earth, they may be terrestrial, they may be the size of the Earth, but that's about all we know yet. We don't know much about the consistency, the composition, the atmosphere, and so forth. We'll need to do a lot more study to figure those things out. And that's the way it is.